Now, Project Discovery is a great thing. You know, they, they've, they've actually made some actual true medical advancements from Project Discovery. It's a real thing. And, um, and, I'm, and I am kind of surprised to see it come out again with all of the AI stuff because they can train AI to do this type of stuff too. Although humans are always going to do things that AI doesn't think of. They're always going to try things that are different and everything. Um, maybe not always, but, you know, that's, that's kind of uh, um, the norm. It's, why, it's also why, so humans are why I like playing MMOs. I've played plenty of single-player RPGs and... You know, plenty of plenty of uh, single player games and everything. And the AI or the or the we I mean we've we've called them you know the NPCs. The AI is way different now than it was five years ago. Because um, if you referred to AI five years ago, you were like, well, the NPC has uh, has room to make decisions on its own, but they're really kind of maybe random number generator type stuff or whatnot and now it's it's just batshit crazy smart and um so you know getting back to project discovery i would think that this stuff would probably get more results throwing ai at it but um and this might be the last time we do project discovery in the game because of uh because of the fact that that AI may just do so many more leaps and bounds above in this kind of stuff than humans can do. But you could also look at it as, if you're gonna make a specialized AI to do this kind of stuff, why not train it off of humans who are just really, really smart in, in figuring this stuff out? And, um, and I could totally see that. So I can still see that maybe there would be a reason for it. Um, but I, I wonder about the effectiveness in the future. Um, and you say Eve botters are a kind of AI, I guess. Uh, I'll tell you that, okay, so yeah, I guess story time here. Back in the day in World of Warcraft, um, I helped with, with um, a bot that um that would do your play for you and everything in um in world of warcraft and this is before this is prior to 2010 when i decided that i was no longer going to support anything like that and everything uh i got taken to court over it um there's a there's you know a documentary film about it called play money which you can't find anywhere right now um and, um, you know, so I have a lot of experience with that. And, and so it's been a lot of years since, since I've done anything like that, but the knowledge of how the bot worked and everything and how botting in general worked and uh, my being so deep into AI right now is that uh, AI in games is going to become a real big problem over the next couple years. And I, I'll give you an example of why that's going to be such a big problem. I mean, like right now, I'm sure that, um, that any botting applications made for Eve or whatnot, if they're not using AI, they're pretty dumb. Um, and I, I think that, uh, I think that you know, so they're, they're just going off old school or whatever. Um, I think that uh, with AI that you could probably make some amazing bots right now. And, and that, that, you know, gives me pause because I don't want bots in the game or whatnot, but I think it's very possible um, that, you know, we have bots in the game right now that are using AI at at least at some sort of, of uh, level. Well, here's the problem. Is that, um, is that we are soon going to have screen readers. Um, so uh, OpenAI has shown 
that they have uh, built an application that can monitor your screen. Also, Microsoft has it, which it's built off of OpenAI's thing. It's the one where they got um, they got razzed so bad about about um, about uh, the uh, personal security and everything because it was even going to see you, you know you doing your banking and all of that and it was going to keep this thing that was like a recall history so that you could bring back up anything later. Well, the problem was is that how do you filter out that sensitive information and uh, and I think that. I think that they just have to rethink that idea because the problem is, is that anybody gets into your repository of that information and then you are just screwed because it's got all your shit, everything. It knows how to log into your password, you know, um, application. It knows how to, how you generate passwords. It knows, you know, all of your stuff. And it's just way too powerful to destroy somebody. And... But we do have coming out for, um, for PC sometime this year for people who are paid with ChatGPT, there will be a screen reading application that will, in fact, allow you to run it. And uh, now it doesn't in the first iteration do any actions for you, but in future iterations, it most likely will. And so you would be able to train it off of your play in the game and then it it possibly could react like you do and it will become a mirror of you um so that right there is something that is very very disturbing and it's not just for eve it's for all games that are online and so how are we going to combat this? I really hope that CCP has been putting a lot of effort into the detection of stuff like this and how to eliminate it. Because, you know, we're taking the threat scale of, um, you know, of botters in game from, you know, like right now we see it as like, okay, it's a seven or eight out of 10 you know, on how harmful it is to the game. Well, we're going to take it now to a scale of, you know, instead of 1 to 10, 1 to 100. And, and then we're going to be 70 or 80 out of 100. But we're talking of a jump in scale here that it's literally going to be at minimum 10 times worse. And so... Uh, this is going to be a big issue for, uh, for all video games. It's an issue for websites and everything. Um, the, the number of attacks that are thrown at our website has gone up greatly. And the, the number of... Um, and, and the things that, that are being tried has, uh, has gone up greatly. And uh, the problem is, is that the AI can look so human that it's, you know, almost impossible to detect. And so, so really, maybe it has to switch from, you know, detecting whether it's a script or whether it's AI to, de to detecting whether or not it's a threat. But does that help you in EVE? Just detecting whether or not it's a threat? I don't think so. Because, because the threat to you as a player is normal play from other players. And so uh, then, so there, there's also another thing that was used uh, quite commonly in the 2000s for detection of, uh, of and this is a really simple method, for, for detection of people who are cheating in game and really, that was uh, doing a statistical analysis of, of the actions that they're taking and whether or not they fall into like the top one-tenth of one percent of, of successful actions in whatever area, shooting other players or, um, or mining or whatever. And then... 
uh, and then having a GM go and look at them and then talk to them and see if they respond. If they don't respond, then they boot them for being a bot. And so, you know, the same thing is like uh, uh, an aimbot or whatnot that lets you see through walls and know where to shoot and, and stuff like that. Um, statistically, they, they get too high. And this is why people like um, Summit 1G and Dakotas, um, who are just amazing at uh, first-person shooter games, uh, why they get their accounts banned from time to time in an auto ban because they're achieving such high level of success. I know both of those guys personally, um, and, um, and, and they're, not, they're not cheating. They are just incredibly skilled athletes, so to say. Um, they, are, they are incredibly skilled. And, um, but they have, the, they have the problem of getting popped, uh, getting a ban, you know, because they are so successful. And, and so that even happens to this day. So this method is probably even still used to this day. But, um, you know, so then you build into your AI bot that, okay, it doesn't always have success. So let's give it more of a, a good human level success. So let's give it a 90% success to where it's still able to be profitable for you instead of being that top 10th of 1% where you're insanely profitable and, and go in, in, you know, and it'll last longer. Well, I mean, I feel like a little bit talking about this stuff that I'm like giving advice on how to develop a bot and that's not at all what my intention is. I'm really talking about fears here. And because this stuff's coming, whether we like it or not, this stuff is coming into the game. And um, <clears throat> so if you're gonna bot, why play? Well, so here's the answer. Like, so I lose a paladin here and, uh, and I need to replace it. Okay, so I can do a couple of things. One, I might already have the money in the game. Or two, I go out and I, and I work with another ship and I, and I work on it until, I, until I'm able to get um, you know, enough money to, to buy this ship that I want to fly personally. Or I go and buy Plex or whatever and then I sell it in game and then I, and then I uh, buy that. So this is kind of the three, the three things. Well, if I, can, if I can add a fourth option, which is let my bot run a ship until I, um, until I uh, you know, make enough money to buy another one of these, then that is, that is uh, um, attractive to some people. And, and then they may just be running that along the side the whole time and everything. Um, you know, the, while they're doing other types of play so that they can, you know, afford to lose more ships, maybe in PVP or whatever, you know? So, um, <clears throat> anyway, it, uh, I don't know. I feel like I'm on a little bit of a tangent here. It is, um, It's something we're all going to have to deal with. And it's going to hit at any point over the next two years. Like, really? Something could release tomorrow that makes this a real problem. And, um, and it has the power to destroy games. Like, let me just give you another example. What if uh, AI is smart enough to become an active guild member, or I mean court member, and, and get trusted. And, and so, so what if there was an AI character that was able to gain so much trust that they gained roles in a corporation where they had access to stuff? 
And then that was the whole thing. So they let the AI play for six months, building trust and everything. And then they gank, or no, they, they, they don't gank, they, they steal everything from the corp once they've got that. Um, and, uh, you know, so, uh, you know, and they, and they may not be sharp as attack, but think of this, think of this, think of your friends in real life. Think of your friends in real life. You have friends that are really, really sharp, that they are really smart, and they know a ton of shit, and, and they love to play games and everything. And, you and sure they rock. And Tom's they are... Tom just subscribed for two months. Thank you, uh, thank you, Tom Zonarts. Um, they, they have a... Um, you know, they're just, they're just really good people and you would trust them. So think of your friend here who is maybe not as high of IQ, plays a lot, does some dumb stuff from time to time, but has a, um, but has a really good ethic. Like when you, uh, Tom, I'll take care of you here in a few minutes. Um, but has a really good ethic. Like, they, they're always honest. And if you ask them to help, they say yes. And they come and help you. And, and stuff like that. And so, if they are... Uh, if, if they become trustworthy, this is also the type of person that you may assign roles in a corporation to... Uh, uh, to have access to stuff, to, to the corporate bank account or to corporate hangers or whatnot. And so if you uh, can think of this as like the guy that's sharp as a tack who you play with and, and is really always on the ball and is very vocal and very uh, engaging in conversation and stuff. And then you have your other friend who's not nearly as engaging in conversation, does some dumb stuff once in a while, but proves themselves very trustworthy in everything. I bet you that AI could replicate that second person that does some dumb stuff every once in a while that you don't understand, but they always talk in a way of, I'll always help you, you can trust me, and, and stuff like this. And so eventually you give them more roles in your corp. And then once they have that, they continue on for a little bit more, and now that they have the roles, the AI, because this guy's an AI, can then start inventorying everything and know where everything is, come out with the best plan possible for how to steal all of the shit. And, um, and I really think that that is something that, um, that is, we could have that right now in the game right now that could be a thing think about it it really could it could be a thing right now you know they say don't trust anybody in eve not even your alts obviously if you're the one controlling your alts you can trust your alts but that's just like how far your trust should go um and uh so I think that um, I think that this is coming, and uh, I think that you know, who knows? Maybe we're going to end up with you know. Back in the day, I ran a company called Trust Who, where we did identity verification, and basically what we did was we said that they were that they were verified. We verified they were real people. We verified that they were doing honest transactions and everything, and we wouldn't release anyone's information except to law enforcement when there was a dispute. So if it escalated all the way to where law enforcement got involved and they gave a warrant or something, then we would provide the information. And that we were very upfront about that and um, and so, and people wanted to do commerce, but weren't trusted online. So we had this company called Trust Who that tried to build the trust. 
and uh, and it worked and everything. And we would have people that were reported by multiple people as scammers or whatnot. We would look into it. We would disable people. And um, then we had other people that they'd have different levels of trust and the more transactions and positive feedback and everything that they got, the, the trust would go up. And, uh, and if there was anything that went legal, we would respond to that. And that was part of when you signed up for the service and paid for it, that uh, you knew that if you were going to go out there thieving from people, that eventually your information would get turned over to law enforcement. It was very clear. And, and, and that worked out really well. Now, how do we verify that a person is actually playing and it's not an AI? That's a really good question. Do you require them to have a camera on? and see you playing do you you know do you do some sort of identity verification um what do you do and and um but then but then even if okay so let's say that you go as far as saying okay you have to have a camera on yourself while you're playing all the time that can see your keyboard and see your face or whatever some shit like that well I could make, you know, with AI, we can probably soon make video of someone replicating all the actions as they happen. You know, I don't, I don't think it's that, uh, it's that far off. So anyway, I think that, um, um, I, I think that that's all, that's all coming. It's going to be a problem. And the, the way we play our MMOs is going to change. I don't know how it's going to change, but it is going to change. And I fear that. I fear that. I do. Because I really enjoy my games. I really enjoy EVE. And, um, and this kind of technology can come out and destroy communities our online communities. It really can. So, all right. If you're watching on YouTube, I will see you in the next episode.